Welcome to Mission 360, where we focus on mission stories and challenges all around us. You don't want to miss today's episode. We'll start by visiting the Republic of Congo to hear how a family is attracting their community with a band of homemade trumpets. Then we'll talk with our Adventist mission leaders from East Central Africa and Southern Asia regions. And my favorite stop today is India. You will hear the testimony of three faithful students. They stayed strong and it paid off. Let's begin with visiting the Republic of Congo. Pastor Lobo is a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. He lives in the city of Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo. In a city with more than 10 million people, sharing God's word can be difficult. But Pastor Lobo and his family have found a unique way of getting people's attention. The family goes to the streets and plays homemade trumpets for the community. As the children play their trumpets in the street, their father preaches the word of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Loban Zambia Zamalamu. Zambia Zamalamu. People passing by are captivated by the unique sight and listen to the pastor's words. The pastor brings out his piano to continue praising in the street. The songs they play tell of the wonderful things God has done. They share how Jesus' love is given freely to anybody who is willing to accept him as their savior. The people standing by soon join in the praise. We come, we come today. We praise our Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings. Their unique street-side trumpet ministry has allowed many people to hear about Jesus. The children are thrilled to help their father teach God's message. It's amazing to see how God can use something as simple as a homemade trumpet and a willing family to be important instruments for His purpose. This family worships in their home so that they are spiritually fed and the children may continue to grow serving God. Here in Kinshasa, the children are on fire for the Lord. They want to serve Him any way they can, but on Sabbath they have no place to meet for Sabbath school. They sit in the same area with the adults where they may not understand the message or are forced to worship outside under the sometimes harsh elements of Africa. A portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will go to help build shelters for the children of Kinshasa to worship. Here they will be able to learn about the love of Jesus and grow to be faithful servants of God. Please pray for these children and others in East Central Africa who are being used as instruments for God and thank you for your faithful support of mission around the world. We worship Jesus Christ, King of Kings. What a creative family. They are using what's available to them to attract their friends to Jesus. The story you saw came from the Republic of Congo where Pastor Elkana Karosi works as an Adventist mission coordinator for the entire East Central Africa region. Let's visit with him and learn more about what is happening there. I'm delighted that Pastor Karosi is joining us. Pastor Karosi, you are our Adventist mission coordinator for what we call the East Central Africa region. That's a huge territory. It is. It is. Take us for a little tour. Tell her, describe the territory that it involves. Well, East Central Africa Division comprises of the countries Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, DRC, which is Democratic Republic of Congo, and then South Sudan. And then you go to the country of Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, and Somalia. Wow. This is a vast area which comprises of East Central Africa Division. That is uh, a lot of people. Yes. And a lot of tribal groups and different cultures and languages and dialects. All that. 
and uh, people from all various backgrounds. Yeah. When you go to the coastal region of Eastern Africa, you mainly find the Swahili people who are a mixture of Arabs and Bantu people. Uh, and they produce a language called Kiswahili. Yeah. Yes. Which, now, you are from Kenya. How, how many languages and dialects do you speak? Well, for me, I speak only four. Only four? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's three more than I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, you, you were born in Kenya. Tell me, how did the Seventh-day Adventist Church begin in Kenya? Well, the early missionaries came to Kenya through Lake Victoria oh. and landed in an area called Gendia. That is in South Kenya, in the, in the country of Kenya. That's where the early missionary work began. And then it started spreading from that area coming into Kisiland and then going into central Kenya and even to the coast and to the rest of the country. Mm. Yes. Now, how many believers do we have there today, in Ken just in Kenya? In Kenya alone, we are having over 758,000 membership of the Seventh-day Adventist. Okay, so the first Adventist uh, missionaries came. How long was it before they baptized their first person? It took over 10 years. Wow. Because naturally, people were not prepared. They were not receptive. But when the, the element of education came in, it made people to be thirsty for education. Ah. And through that process, they started now learning to know about the faith of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So the key that started it was education. Definitely, yes, it was. Now, throughout your territories, you have many schools and colleges, universities. How important is education today in the mission work of the church? Well, we can't underestimate the education program in the country because it has been very key in, in every sector of growth in people's life. Mm. It has even made people to be less hostile. Mm. And they are, they are, it empowers them to be able to learn and to support themselves and to empower themselves. So naturally, when you look at the education in our country, it has literally been an open door for people to move forward in, with their lives. Mm. And so you can find even in other regions within the East Central Africa division, we are finding that education is extremely important. You go to Ethiopia, we have the Adventist College in Ethiopia. When you go to DRC, we have Lukanga University. Mm. And uh, when you come to Uganda, we have Bugema University. And also in Arusha, we have Arusha Adventist University. All these universities are preparing many young people and women and men for the future. Mm. And, uh, you know, Adventist education is very unique. It gives people direction about themselves and about their lives and about their future. Mm. Yes. Now, Pastor Karosi, there is also a, a strong focus on church planting. And we have many global mission pioneers working in the various countries of your territories. Tell us about the pioneers and what they do. Well, the global mission pioneers, we have endeavored and determined that they are going in areas where there is a little or no presence of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And these ones, they go to regions which are very, very difficult, mm. where sometimes you find uh, infrastructure is almost tough and hard. Mm. These are areas where you find even poverty level is very high. So naturally, when they are sent into these areas, the first thing they do is to make friendship right. with the community and get involved start knowing people, and slowly by slowly they are able to start uh, laying bridges of relationship, and finally they are able to introduce people to Christ. 
But one thing we need to know is that uh, in most of these areas, we are not the first people to be in that region as far as uh, propagating the gospel of Christ is concerned. And therefore, sometimes we get hostile attitude from other uh, faith as far as uh, planting churches in those areas are concerned. Right, so you need to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves or sort of the other way around us. <laughs> very yeah. tactful yes. and very friendly. And then we need also to be open enough to the really issues of faith and how to help people. Wonderful. Mm. Pastor Croce, I know there's so much more to tell, but thank you so much for sharing with us today. And may God richly bless you in your work. I also appreciate for letting me to come here to share with you the global mission work in East Central Africa Division. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, we will visit India and watch the story of the three faithful students. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mission 360. Our next guest, Pastor Mohan Roy, comes from the Southern Asia Division, where he works as an Adventist mission coordinator. He brings us the news and stories of missionaries, particularly stories about global mission pioneers. Pioneers are the bravest Seventh-day Adventists who travel to the most remote villages to share the story of Jesus. Pastor Mohan Roy, it's a pleasure to see you again. We have known each other for many years now. Yes. Uh, I think when we first met, you were the director of the Hindu Study Center, the Global Mission Hindu Study Center, and you were helping us find ways to build bridges of understanding with our Hindu brothers and sisters. But now you're directing the Adventist mission work, the global mission work in the Southern Asia region. Now, that is a huge territory. Yes. Not just physically, but number of people. How, how many people do you estimate live in, in the, that territory? We have around uh, 1.23 billion people live in India. Wow. That's a good start. And yeah. then on top of that, you've got Nepal. We have Nepal, Bhutan, and Maldives silence. Yeah. Now, among these, this huge population, you have many different religions, different cultures, different languages. Give us some idea of that. The India is known as a religious country. So we have Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, Islam, and Christianity, and animism too. Yeah. And how many languages and dialects? So we have around uh, 20 official languages. Okay. And uh, we have more than 450 other dialects. We have no script at all. <laughs> Amazing. So, yeah. so how many do you speak? I speak around four languages. Yeah, it's always humbling to meet people like you because you speak many languages. So, Pastor Roy, in, in caring for global mission in your territories, yes. you're basically focusing on church planting. Tell yeah. me about how you do this. We have a global mission uh, pioneers in working uh, in the villages, in the towns, and the cities. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you right there. Yeah. Tell me, what is a global mission pioneer? Global mission pioneer is uh, voluntarily working in the Southern Asia Division. We just give little uh, stipend to survive. And they were very good and going out and preaching the Word of God. And they show the love of Jesus and share the love of Jesus Christ to other people. Wonderful, yeah. So you have them going out to the villages and to the cities. Yeah. yeah? Uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting some of those pioneers. Yes. And whenever I meet them, I am very humbled because they are not getting a big wage. Yes. It's basically a living stipend, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, they were happy to do this ministry, even though they get very low stipend. And they were happy with that. And they always uh, do very good work in, among the other religions and non-Christians. They say we are serving the Lord and we are satisfied what we receive yeah. from us. Yeah. How, how many pioneers do you have working at the moment? At present, uh, we have uh, 304 pioneers working in Nepal, Bhutan and India. Yeah. So they basically put 
Christ's method of mission into practice. It's a holistic mission. Yes. They don't just come and preach. As you say, they care for the people. Tell me about some of the methods that they use. The method they use, first they need to go to the village and uh, talk to the elders of the village. And the first they have a friendship. And later on they have the fellowship. Then they will give, they will have a prayer. Ah. First, when they have a friendship and fellowship, they slowly introduce Jesus Christ for them. Mm. So people are interested in the miracle stories and uh, uh, that songs they like very much, Christian songs. So therefore, they show interest in the pioneers' work in the villages and the towns and the cities. Mm. Now, prayer is very important. It doesn't matter what religion or background you have in India. Prayer is very important. C can you describe that? The, in India, we have a number of religions. The Hindu people believe in worship and we call it puja. The same way in Christianity also we have a worship. So when somebody is sick, we go and pray for them. They never object. Mm. They like prayer. So even they ask us to pray for the children better future, and the children marriage and their education. Mm. So this is the one weapon we use them by prayer uh, to capture them slowly and steadily. Okay, so in love, of course. <laughs> yeah, that is there. <laughs> so uh, the Global Mission Pioneers, uh, the, 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 as you say, there's a, a couple of hundred working there. Tell me a story about a pioneer and the work that he is doing. Okay, there is one pioneer in Calcutta. His name is Thomas Roy. So he first visited in one village and met with the elders who were there. And the elder objected him. But uh, he started with the health awareness among them. He called the young people and cleaned up all their villages and uh, educated the ladies to how to clean their children and uh, he uh, expressed uh, some of the things that they need to uh, have a good health because they were always having fever, dengue fever, and all other sicknesses. But when he went there and told about the health awareness, they were showed interest in him. Mm. And they requested you to come and tell more about the health principles. Mm. And apart from that, uh, when he visited the sick people, they showed much interest in that. Uh. So they expressed, uh, why can't you tell about the love of Jesus? And our uh, pioneers always go, first they talk to the people, and they start with the prayer, and they start uh, telling the Bible-based songs. Mm. And they like the songs very much, because the, the non-Christians also, they love to hear the religious songs. The first one, the songs. The second one is the prayer or worship and the fellowship they enjoy much. And the pioneers taking this as a weapon to capture those people. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor Mohan, uh, you have a tremendous challenge in that in in your region of the world. Yeah. Uh, but many, many, many precious people, and I want to thank you for the the work that you're doing. And and please pass on the greetings from us to the pioneers and thank them for the work that they are doing. It is my pleasure to be with you, and to share some of the things that what the pioneers doing in Southern Asia. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. It's nice to hear stories of faith from the Southern Asia region, but nothing better than to visit it and see what's happening there. Let's watch the three faithful students from India who stood strong for their belief. For this reason, they even got attention from the media. It's an encouraging piece. Jinsi, Sabine, and Remya are students at Katarakara Seventh-day Adventist School in Southern India. At the end of the 10th grade, students who want to continue their studies must take a government-administered exam. They get admission for colleges based on the result, and therefore it is very crucial, very determinant for their future life. One cannot think of not attempting their examination if they want to pursue their study further. The government exam date was on Sabbath, and the principal worked hard to get an alternate date, but they were not able to change it. 
The principal went to court on behalf of the three students. And finally, the judge agreed that they could take the exams after the Sabbath hours. The night of the test, they should have been tired, but they felt refreshed as they completed the exams. It was a bit nice to write the exam after Sabbath and also, uh, and also praise the God for giving this opportunity to write this exam after Sabbath. And we got a nice mark, a nice and good mark to, uh, for that exam. When the exam results were issued, the three faithful students learned that they had scored higher than the other students who had taken the exam earlier in the day. After the exam, the media descended on the Adventist school campus. Newspaper and from the TV channel, everywhere people flooded in. And they asked me, what's this? The whole public, the entire public came to know about Sabbath. What is Sabbath and why they keep Sabbath? Because of your financial support of the World Budget and Mission Offerings, a new classroom block will be constructed on the Katarakara campus. The new building will bring 20 new classrooms and allow the school to be accredited by a non-governmental council that will not administer the tests on the Sabbath. Thank you for your support of the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. To find out more, please visit AdventistMission.org. I hope you're enjoying the stories and places we visited today. Please remember to pray for these missionaries and global mission pioneers. If you want to find more stories and support Adventist Mission Work, please visit AdventistMission.org. There are a lot more stories on the website. After a short break, Gary Kraus will join us with some final thoughts. The Gospel of John starts with these beautiful words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And then you come down a few more verses to verse 14. It says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. The Greek word here for dwelling means He pitched His tent among us. He tabernacled with us. He became one with us. And this word comes right at the end of the Bible again when we come to Revelation chapter 21. And now the dwelling place of God is with people and he will live with them. That's the promise that once again, Jesus will live with us. When we look at the incarnation, the way that Jesus came from heaven to earth and became one with us, it's truly a marvelous thing. And it provides the blueprint for how we are to conduct mission today. Mission is not something that can just be conducted from a distance by remote control. It's something that we are called to do, living close to people, becoming one with them. I remember visiting a global mission pioneer once who told me how he had begun new congregations in a new area by what he called treading the ground. And what he meant by that was that he came, he became one with the people, he spoke the same language, he lived, he worked, he played with them, and then he led them to Jesus Christ. What a wonderful mission we've been given. If you'd like to find out more about Adventist mission around the world, please visit our website at www.adventistmission.org. Until next time, I'm Gary Krause from Mission 360, and I hope you can join me right here next time on this program. Thank you.